Hi, this video provides you with an overview of Supermicro Server Manager SSM. Uh, this utility provides you with a one-stop management console with the most number of features for hardware management of Supermicro servers in your data center. First, uh, once you log in into the dashboard, you would see the host status, the service status, the operating systems installed, and the motherboard skills. The user interface view is mapped to the administration of the tool towards your left, the information on the servers in the center, and the commands and actions that you can perform on the servers on the right. You can see the host status, service status, host names, and also you can fill, use the filters to see which servers are doing well, up and down, and also the service status. Let us now see the administration functions. Hosts can be sorted in administrative functions like add, delete, group, and all these functions can be performed by the host types or the operating systems installed on the host. As mentioned prior, all applicable actions and commands for each function are on the right pane. You can set up the users and perform actions like add and delete. You can also upload a VNC viewer file for the KVM console function for Supermicro servers through its VNC. You can set up email alerts to report issues as seen by SSM to your support teams. Once you have installed SuperDoctor 5 as an agent, SSM makes it easy to update SuperDoctor 5 patches across your Supermicro servers. On the maintenance of database, though this is rarely used, you can schedule your database maintenance while backing up your raw data information. You can also configure your own SSM IP address. You can update the latest package of the most popular Supermicro Update Manager for upgrading and configuring BIOS and other firmware. You can also deploy enterprise Linux operating systems on all your managed servers and set up your OS repository and kickstart files. You can also create groups. It could be, for example, a data center group like or a cluster group like here in this example, we will name it as Los Angeles and provide a description and add a couple of servers to this host group that has been created. You can also add contacts and receivers for emails and SNMP alerts. You can also check events and logs for SSM server, whether it is for the last one hour or for the last one year. You can also sort the number of results that you would want to view. So here we are going to see the events for the last one year and query them. You can also activate some of the keys and can get the information about the version of SSM. Now you could see the host group Los Angeles in the main view now. Service view is similar to the host view. So now let us go back to the host view and check the details of the health information for a server so we can see the thing and uh, it's reaching to the server you can also see the, some of the service modules uh, which are in green color um, so including overall health information uh, cell events memory health information uh, storage and uh, expected server components whether they're detected or not you can also find uh, system summary information and host properties that shows your check intervals and retry times Next, uh, we will go to IPMI commands that are supported on a server. It has a rich list of BIOS firmware and system management software features. You can see some other information uh, that we will this will be displayed in the detail uh, in the demo. 
So as an illustration, uh, let us see, uh, we could use a deployment of an operating system. Now you can select one of the OS from the repository and select a kickstart file and next execute the function on selected host or a group of hosts. So this is an asynchronous action and you can see the status under the deployment progress. So let's see, there you go. And one can expect to see the results among one of the four tabs. You can cancel the task before the completion of the task. Next, uh, let us take another example of uh, executing tasks on a single server or multiple servers. So first, let us take an example of choosing a single server. Here, uh, we can export a BMC configuration setting. So, it takes a couple of seconds and you can get the text file and you can view the results in the CSV format. Similarly, you can execute an export BMC configuration file on multiple servers. So you can select multiple IP addresses as a host name and export the BMC configuration file. You can perform uh, such parallel operations, which could be any command on multiple servers uh, at the same time. So on systems in, that has Super Doctor 5 installed, you can also get asset information. One can see the BIOS, the BMC, and uh, some system information. You can also view the operating system installed with the help of Tin Agent service. And you can also see some of the OEM configuration information. You can also open IPMI web browser directly. You can you can change some host properties such as passwords for BMC controllers, etc. You can now we see one of the server, the service status went critical. So, uh, from a hardware perspective, everything looks good, uh, you can ping, you can see the other service modules are alright, but when you click the cell module, you can see the issue is from the CPU. Now let us continue to the reporting function. The first one is the availability of SSM itself. Uh, we can see it is running at least from uh, last month uh, to the day this demo is done. Uh, we can check in the month of February, looks like SSM was started on 2.12 here. We can also check the detailed history of SSM availability or a history report for all the servers monitored in the data center over certain duration. So here you can also check the detailed history uh, for individual hosts or a group of hosts. So for example, we have selected two hosts, 175, 176, and they're running 100% for the last seven days. You can also receive graphical uh, information uh, for a certain host. And you can see for how long they've been working or have been operational. So detailed reports of events around host uh, are performed here. Uh, similarly, we can see the service reports as well. One can check the service reports, the availability reports of each service over the last two weeks. So here we'll take an example of 179, uh, or maybe we could take it for last one month and query that and see those different services are up for a certain duration and they have some issues over some over some time.
So we have support in English and in traditional and uh, simplified Chinese. So with such powerful features, uh, one can easily use this tool as a standalone or as an effective middleware uh, into existing deployments with the help of RESTful APIs. So now let us look into the overview of APIs. We have APIs sorted depending upon whether it is a synchronous or an asynchronous operation. For asynchronous, we can have information such as systems, events and services, asynchronous, firmware and system related information. So the root directory is under SSM Web API. So you can see different links to the supported APIs under the root directory. Now each host has a uh, unique ID, so we'll show it in a second. So as soon as you get this information, you would see that the uh, successful code is 200. So the host ID for a certain server 170 is 764 with an IP address as you can see. And all those hosts are up and running. So let's take an example of one host uh, with a host ID of 828. Now we'll copy that into the web browser and form a URL for that host and see that the uh, IP address of that particular host and the server is up and the capabilities that are supported by that particular host. So all these capabilities that what we have seen on the web UI uh, are available through the RESTful APIs. So this is another way for uh, you to use this as a middleware and build up your own uh, web browser on top of it or a web interface on top of it or you could use to uh, interface into your existing infrastructure. So in this example, we are taking a memory, uh, so you can get the asset information about the memory for the for this host, and you can see the different formats. Uh, so HTML, JSON, and JSON has a, a very good way of parsing the information. Uh, so let's go to the next example for an asynchronous operation. So let's select asset information. So in the asset information, as soon as you go to that particular link, so we're going to copy the link for the asset information here. So there we go. And uh, we're going to use the asset information for 828 and we're going to hit a send. Now if you look into the status of this particular task, so the, as I mentioned, this task is an asynchronous and this task is running. Now once the task is completed, you will see an updated results information and you can see the systems, the motherboard information, the CPU, memory and everything that's related to the asset information. So many more features uh, coming up for SSM software so please tune in and send your comments thank you for watching the video and following us